My name's Guy Kesteven and I've been a professional bike and kit tester for nearly 25 years and I've just been filming uh, the Muck Off Bike Pressure Washer review, uh, link there, uh, while cleaning uh, my Calibre Sentry kind of long-term test mule and I thought, well, actually while it's out here, why don't I just kind of talk you through the bike really because it deserves a mention. It's done some, uh, as you'll see from the paintwork when we get up close, it's it's done a fair amount of work. Uh, basically, it's been my long travel test rig uh, since I did the live ride review on it. Uh, I have, you know, people say what happens to bikes after you've tested them. Most of them go back straight away, and others I kind of keep because they're a really good platform for testing on. And that's exactly why I kept the Sentry. Uh, geometry is great. Uh, the suspension kinematic uh, with this deluxe in there. Uh, you know, it's a fairly you know, it's a basic shock. It's just a deluxe R, but works really well and. I actually tried it with the coil shock in it for a bit as well. I think there's a video online. I'll try and find the link for that. Uh, but yeah, the you know basically a really good solid chassis for uh, putting on heavy duty kit that I want to smash stuff in. And I'll be honest, you know I quite like having a, a nice uh, affordable bike uh, to uh, surprise people with on the trails. You know they maybe don't expect you to keep up if you're not rocking carbon, and it's kind of a bit of a cliche. You know, a bike tester always riding carbon. So there you go, Caliber Sentry. Uh, there's a vote for the underdog with the, uh, you know, impressive performance. Anyway, I am I'm waffling here. So alloy frame, 65-degree uh, head angle, 150mm uh, travel. It was 160mm Yari fork up front. Uh, it's currently wearing a uh, DVO barrel, uh, which is the simplified version of the DVO Diamond uh, which, and it's a great fork it's you know hasn't got quite the top uh, level of adjustability you've just got low speed compression on the top there and it hasn't got an um, off the top uh, dial which is DVO's kind of I guess negative spring set almost uh, you know it basically makes the fork more and more sensitive at the start and it hasn't got that which makes it a lot easier to tune I mean the standard Diamond is a great fork but it can be a bit of a fight to find that sweet spot before all the different dials. You kind of got to get, get the Venn diagrams to overlap. Uh, front wheel is still standard, WTB, uh, with muck-off valves on it to turn it tubeless. Um, it's testing Panaracer Aliso tyres. Uh, Panaracer's new sort of free ride. Uh, free ride, God, that dates me. Uh, Enduro tyre, you've got to call them now. So 29 by 2.6 on the front. And then it's actually a uh, 27 by... Uh, 2.6, 27.5 by 2.6 on the rear. So it's actually running a mullet setup at the moment, which is why it's got that DT Swiss uh, 35 in there. Bit of a mixed bag on transmission now. Uh, Hope crank from when I was testing the Hope crank. That's been on there a while. Uh, you know, doesn't look like it though. Bit of you know, bit of uh, polishing up there. But apart from that, considering I've probably ridden this mostly in trousers in the rain. Uh, that's looking pretty tough. Chainring teeth are looking fine. Original chain. Uh, that's an SLX cassette on there because it's got a microdrive spline on the DT Swiss wheels. And then it's the original NX rear mech. So still SRAM in there somewhere. And obviously up at the bars, uh, original NX shifters and the absolutely awesome uh, Guide RE brakes. Love those brakes. I mean, not as touchy-feely as a Code RSC or something like that because it hasn't got the swing link cam in there. But just super powerful, super predictable. Uh, fabric fun by fun guy grips because I binned off the original caliber ones because they were horrible. <laughs> they were just really, really painful and solid. So uh, yeah, switch them out. And oh, and the bar. Uh, why did I change the bar? Because it's quite a fancy bar. Um, oh, this actually came on my white S120 when that first arrived, even though it wasn't spec because that wasn't a spec bike either. But I took the stem off this to put on the evil chamois Hagar when I was trying to make that handle properly because uh, I needed a short 31.8 mil stem. So I, this was the bar and stem were just lying about. So I stuck these on the sentry and they've obviously stayed here. Uh, original Corre post still works. Uh, I think it started rattling pretty much within a month of me starting riding it, but it hasn't got any worse and it still goes up and down when I press the lever. So happy days there. And as well as the fabric grips, uh, it's a fabric saddle as well. Uh, this is the Magic Elite Radius. It's like the fancy uh, Josh Bryslin 50 to 1 jump seat. So thought it would suit the bike really. Uh, a bit short, a bit rounder and uh, cut away at the back end there. So the back wheel can come right up even when you got the seat slammed. You know, if I was going to put a jumpy saddle on any bike in my fleet, it would have to be this one. And to be fair, I've put plenty of miles on this and no complaints.
and even you know it's a weighty bike it's actually got heavier uh putting those uh barrels on there and it often runs heavy sticky tires on it so it's you know it tends to be in the region of 15 and a half 16 kilos but it still pedals really really well so uh yeah what more is there to say really uh great shape great suspension uh that's just kind of the kit story that's grown up around it really nothing you know it's a mix of stuff that's been put on for testing and stuff that's just happened to end up on there but a truly kind of faithful test mule that i've put a lot of very happy miles into and you know considering the basic bike is 1500 quid it uh it shows you don't have to spend an absolute fortune to get a good ride you know even even when you're properly i mean i've hammered down this around some properly hardcore trails you know started its life with me uh at Hamsterley and it's been pretty much full gas ever since so you know apart from like I say it could probably have done with some paintwork protection early on and you know where I've had things strapped where I've had uh, bags strapped on it and stuff it's uh, looking a little tired there but apart from that mechanically absolutely rock solid and you know big thumbs up for a calibre for this price point you know Mike Sanderson who was the designer there at the time he's now on one uh, working you know this is kind of his real baby, a proper affordable enduro bike. And yeah, I've loved having it as a long-termer. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this edit. Bit out of the ordinary. Uh, make sure you watch the live ride review and the tech talk round on the Calibre Century. So I'll put those up there. If you haven't already subscribed, then subscribe to the channel. Click for notifications uh, so you know when next videos are coming up. And if you really like what I'm doing on the channel, please consider sponsoring me on Patreon like these fine folk here where for the price of a cup of tea and biscuits uh, a month, uh, you get exclusive early extended and behind the scenes edits and some other perks as well. So I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV, talking you through my Calibre Century long travel long-termer.